everybody. Nice to be here. My name is David Augenbaugh. I'm an animator and visual effects artist. I've had a career that includes computer animation for television and computer games, ranging from the first TV cartoon to be produced on computers with Attack of the Killer Tomatoes in 1989 and into the 8-bit computer game re revolution of the 1990s and then into visual effects for film. I've worked on about 25 titles, primarily as a compositor, and also a bit of CG lighting and some stereo VR. And lately, I've become fascinated with creating animations with a particular focus on how they affect the mental state of the viewer. Human consciousness has been an interest of mine for quite a while. So in addition to studying art, I've studied human consciousness and trance states. Enough of an interest that I studied hypnotherapy and became certified as a clinical hypnotherapist. The effect that art has on us is somewhat mysterious. I've always loved the Impressionists and the Surrealists for this reason. And then there's cinema which is a time-based medium. As much as following a story, the audience is having an experience. Ambiguity becomes very important. Some of the best directors use this quite intentionally. Stanley Kubrick, of course, is a very good example. Christopher Nolan is another. Likewise, musical performance uses time and immersion to have its effect. One of my favorite artists, Laurie Anderson, has a way of bringing the audience on a journey that defies linear storytelling. It's more like the logic of dreams. The Surrealists said that art functions automatically on a subconscious level. The animations I create are designed to function directly. They're abstract and intentionally evocative. They avoid anything literal, anything that could be called meaning, because that kind of interpretation occurs in the thinking part of the brain. I'm interested in going deeper, the subconscious mind, stimulating the creative imagination in the viewer. This is subtle, however. The viewer need not think about it. In fact, it may be better if they don't. This is true of all artwork. However, most artwork has layers of meaning stacked on top. Things like recognizable characters and stories, plot lines, things that you can think about. Logic, morality, consequence, like all good surrealists, I'm interested in removing those extra layers. What we're left with is animation that is abstract, colorful, full of detail, with imagery that's intentionally evocative of familiar things, without ever being explicit. The visual imagination is engaged. You're identifying things, anticipating things, but never quite landing. As soon as you start to feel like you have something, a new thing comes into your awareness. The mind wants to sort and categorize and label. The constant flow of new imagery is more than the mind can capture. Here, there's nothing to grab onto, so it sort of overflows. Eventually, the mind gives up and just goes along for the ride. This leaves you in a pleasant state. This could be called a flow state. Flow states are characterized by quiet focus and immersion. You're very alert, but relaxed. We're all familiar with flow states, but they can be elusive. This work encourages people to pay attention, which facilitates present moment awareness. It grounds you in the present moment. 
you are alert and present and your creative mind is active. I didn't set out to do animations that would have this quality. I stumbled into it, and my training in hypnotherapy allowed me to recognize what was happening. It felt like a discovery as much as a creation. I've become completely obsessed with it. Now I want to keep exploring and developing this work. Creating more animations will require developing technology. Currently, they're labor intensive. The first one took me six months to create. The second one took about a month. But even more than solving technical problems, I want to learn and master the art. Learning how the work functions and when it works best will make the work more compelling. And so far, we've been watching this animation with its particular qualities. But now let's look at it another way and see what that's like. So this is the same animation, just presented in a different way. Some of you may recognize this as a lat long, which is a format for VR environments. Some of the variables I've been working with are simple things like speed, movement of the focal point, forward and reverse flow. How active should the music be? And then things like wraparound displays and other immersive experiences. Is there a way to introduce 3D depth? <coughs> How about interactivity? Does giving the viewer control of some aspect of the experience increase engagement, or does it activate the thinking mind in a way that's counterproductive? What are the trade-offs? The first thing that really sparked my curiosity was the possibility of making it a 360-degree wraparound experience. The idea of making it more immersive was intriguing. It turned out to be more challenging than I expected. Just applying simple spherical transforms didn't give the effect I was after at all. I ended up creating my own process in After Effects. So if you'll notice, now there's an origin point in the middle of the screen, a little to the left, and a vanishing point over on the right. If we take this image and map it onto a sphere, we get something like this. So here the piece is converted into a 360 degree VR experience. We're now inside a sphere, and I can use my mouse to pan around in here. We're surrounded on all sides by the animation. I can look up, down. If you put on VR goggles, you'll find yourself inside a sphere where the images are emerging in front of you, and if you turn around and look behind you, the animation converges at a vanishing point. This video is available on YouTube, so if you have VR goggles at home, you can check out the VR experience. You can also use your phone to view it and look around just by orienting the phone. Go to YouTube and search Scrap Tangle 360. At the showcase, I'm going to be presenting this as a projection in a wraparound screen setting. I'm interested to see how that kind of presentation changes the quality of the experience. These are all just experiments. So possible venues for this work could include, you know, online sharing, of course, web applications and VR, which could include interactivity, public art installations, placement in film and television, events with big screens like concerts and festivals? Are there interest groups that might overlap, like ASMR, or even something practical like PTSD therapy? I can imagine this at the Sphere in Las Vegas, or maybe Cirque du Soleil. Too bad Pink Floyd isn't still touring. So I'm excited to be sharing this work and getting people's reactions. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.